after studying this module you shall be able to know the importance of accounting ratios learn to calculate the accounting ratios identify the functionality of accounting ratio evaluate the financial performance and position of a firm using accounting ratio analyze and interpret the ratios to begin with accounting ratios are the relationship between two accounting figures and ratio analysis is a process of comparing two accounting ratios ratio analysis is one of the best tools to measure liquidity solvency profitability and management efficiency of the firm if the ratios are derived after analyzing the past results they help management in preparation of budgets in formulation of policies and in preparing future plan of action it gives a clear picture of degree of utilization of resources in the organization it helps to make proper analysis about the strength and weakness of the firm ratios are classified on various basis one such classification is based on the type of financial statement used for the purpose of calculation of ratio the second is based on the function performed by the ratio and another one is based on how the ratios are expressed classification on the basis of type of financial statement used classification based on the functionality of the ratio classification based on how the ratios are expressed classification on the basis of type of financial statement used on the basis of type of financial statement the ratios can be classified as balance sheet ratios which use balance sheet for the calculation and profit and loss ratio which use profit and loss statement to calculate ratios and the third is the combined ratios which use both the statements balance sheet ratios balance sheet ratios use items of the balance sheet only this financial statement alone is sufficient to calculate the ratio example of balance sheet ratio is current ratio this ratio is calculated by using the formula current assets divided by current liabilities now both current assets and current liabilities can be calculated using balance sheet only profit and loss ratios profit and loss ratios are the ratios which calculate ratios using the information completely available in the profit and loss account only example of such a ratio is the gross profit ratio this ratio is calculated by dividing gross profit by total sales this information is also available in income statement combined ratio this uses both the balance sheet as well as the profit and loss statement for the calculation of the ratio example of this type of ratio is the return on capital employed the information regarding profit or return is available from the profit and loss statement while the information related to capital employed is available from the balance sheet classification based on the functionality of the ratio on the basis of functionality ratios can be classified as activity ratios profitability ratios liquidity ratios solvency ratios activity ratios activity analysis indicates the efficiency in the use of capital employed in the business they are also called as turnover ratios they tell us about the asset liquidity as well as the asset management efficiency of the business profitability ratios 
profitability ratios focus on the sufficiency and sustainability of an equity's earnings. These ratios are very important for all the users of financial statements. Liquidity ratios. The term liquidity refers to the firm's ability to pay its liabilities in the short run. They may also be called as short term solvency ratio. They are calculated to determine the relative strength of the organization to meet its current obligations. Short term obligations are compared with short term resources to calculate this ratio. Solvency ratios. It is important for a company to be able to assess its capacity to satisfy its long term commitments. It must analyze the sources and nature of long term funding in the firm. The firm should be able to generate profits to be able to repay interest or dividends to the providers of long term funds and should be able to repay these funds on maturity. A firm should also be able to finance its growth and expansion program. All this can be confirmed by calculating and using solvency ratios. Classification based on how the ratios are expressed. Ratios expressed as a number. Ratios expressed as percentage. Ratios expressed as number of times. Ratios expressed as a number. The ratios can be expressed in the form of a number. Like current ratio can be 1.5, 2, etc. So it is just a number. Ratios expressed as percentage. The ratios can be expressed in the form of percentage like gross profit ratio can be 20%. Ratios expressed as number of times. The ratios can also be expressed as number of times. The example of this type of ratios is majorly turnover ratios like inventory turnover ratio can be 6 or 7 times. Ratios based on functionality. Activity ratios, solvency ratios, profitability ratios, liquidity ratios, also called short term solvency ratios. Activity ratios, inventory turnover ratio, debtors turnover ratio, creditors turnover ratio, asset turnover ratio, fixed asset turnover ratio, working capital turnover ratios, capital turnover ratio. Inventory turnover ratio. Every firm has to maintain some levels of stocks in order to meet its business needs. These stocks can be of raw material or finished goods or even work in progress. Too low or very high levels of stocks are both a dangerous preposition for the firm. Inventory turnover ratios help in maintaining a control over the inventory or stocks. This ratio is given by the following formula. Inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. It may also be given by the following formula if the information of cost of goods sold is not available. Inventory turnover ratio is equal to net sales divided by average inventory at cost. Debtors turnover ratio. A business concern may sell goods on cash or on credit. Credit sale is a very important means of sales promotion. However, on the one hand, where sales increases, on the other hand, large amount of funds gets blocked up 
in the form of debtors. The debtors turnover ratio is an effective means of keeping control over the debtors and their management. It is given by the following formula. Debtors turnover ratio is equal to net credit annual sales divided by average trade debtors. Debtors turnover ratio indicates the number of times the debtors are turned over during a year. Higher the turnover, the better is the debtors management. But a very high ratio may also become unfavorable as that would mean that debtors are very less. The credit period allowed by the firm is very less and the firm may be foregoing potential sales but by not providing reasonable credit period. From the debtors turnover ratio there comes another ratio along and that is average collection period. This ratio indicates the time allowed by the company or firm to its customer in making payment. The ratio is given by average collection period is equal to 360 divided by debtors turnover ratio or average debtors divided by sales per day. Creditors turnover ratio. A firm has to incur short term liabilities as it has to make credit purchases in the course of its business. The supplier of goods that is the creditor is interested that the payment should come as soon as possible whereas the firm would like to delay the payment as much as possible as this is relatively a cheap source of funding. How much potential is exploited by the firm can be known from the creditors turnover ratio which is calculated in the following manner. Creditors turnover ratio is equal to net credit annual purchases divided by average trade creditors. We may also calculate average payment period which is number of working days divided by creditors turnover ratio. From the creditors turnover ratio there comes another ratio and that is average payment period. This ratio indicates the time allowed by the suppliers to the company or firm in making the payment. The ratio is given by average payment period is equal to 360 divided by creditors turnover ratio or average creditors divided by credit purchases per day asset turnover ratio. This ratio indicates to what extent assets are contributing towards sales. This ratio cannot be assessed with one year information. It should be compared with previous periods. It is given by the following formula. Asset turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by average assets. Fixed assets turnover ratio. This ratio indicates to what extent fixed assets are contributed towards sales. This ratio again cannot be assessed with one year data. It should be compared with previous periods. It is given by the following formula. Fixed assets turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by average fixed assets. Working capital turnover ratios. Working capital turnover ratio indicates the number of times the working capital is turned over in the course of a year. It measures the efficiency with which the working capital is being used by the firm. A higher ratio indicates 
efficient utilization of working capital and a low ratio indicates otherwise. But a very high ratio is not good for any firm. This ratio can be used for making of comparative and trend analysis for different firms in the same industry and for various periods. This ratio is given by the following formula. Working capital turnover ratio is equal to cost of sales or sales divided by average working capital. Average working capital is calculated by dividing opening working capital plus closing working capital by 2. Capital turnover ratio. Capital turnover ratio is the relationship between cost of goods sold or sales and the capital employed. This is given by the formula capital turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold or sales divided by capital employed. Solvency ratios. Debt to equity ratio. Capital gearing ratio. Fixed asset ratio. Propriety ratio. Debt service coverage ratio. Interest coverage ratio. Debt to equity ratio. This ratio determines the soundness of the long-term financial policies of the company and also measures the relative investment proportion of outsider's funds and shareholder's fund in the company. It is calculated using the following formula. Long-term debts divided by shareholder's fund. Capital gearing ratio. This is the most commonly used measure which quantifies the relationship between fixed charges bearing debt to equity. It quantifies the relationship between long term sources of finance bearing fixed cost to equity. Fixed interest bearing securities include preference share, debentures, and long-term loans, which carry fixed rate of dividend and interest. The higher this ratio, the more vulnerable the company is perceived to be since there is high fixed commitment on its profit before equity holders are paid anything. It is given by the following formula. Capital gearing ratio is equal to Fixed interest bearing securities divided by equity shareholders fund. Fixed asset ratios. The fixed assets explain whether the fixed assets are financed out of long term funds or not or which part of capital employed is used for purchasing the asset. It is calculated as follows. Fixed asset ratio is equal to fixed assets divided by capital employed or fixed assets divided by long term funds. It is prudent that the fixed assets and core working capital of a company is to be covered by long term funds. If the ratio exceeds 1, it implies some of the fixed assets were financed by short term borrowing and current liabilities. Propriety ratio. This ratio indicates how much are the owners fund in total assets of the organization. It is given by the following formula. Propriety ratio is equal to owners fund divided by total assets. Debt service coverage ratio. This ratio is an extension of the interest coverage ratio. It indicates the ability of the firm to repay the interest and installments on time. This ratio is important from lender's point of view. The formula is debt service coverage ratio is equal to net profits before interest and depreciation divided by 
interest plus installment of principal divided by 1 minus tax. Interest coverage ratio. This ratio measures the cover or safeguard that exists for the lenders of debt. This ratio reveals the debt servicing capacity of the firm. Any lender must assess the paying capacity of the person to whom the loan is extended before disbursing the funds and interest coverage ratio is a good measure for finding out. The formula used to calculate this ratio is given by interest coverage ratio is equal to net profits before interest and taxes divided by interest. Profitability ratios. Profitability ratios tell us about the profitability of the firm and also the profitability from the perspective of shareholders. They give the information regarding margins as well as about the returns generated. The following are some of the important profitability ratio. Gross profit ratio, net profit ratio, net operating profit ratio, return on investment, return on equity, earnings per share or EPS. Gross profit ratio. This ratio measures the relationship between gross profit and net sales and usually expressed as a percentage. This ratio is given by the following formula. Gross profit ratio is equal to gross profit divided by net sales multiplied by 100. Net profit ratio. This ratio is a measure of debt profit to total net sales and is given by the following formula. Net profit ratio is equal to net profit divided by net sales multiplied by 100. Net operating profit ratio. This ratio is an extension of the net profit ratio. It indicates only the operating profits of the firm and excludes other incomes and non-operating expenses so as to truly find out the ability of the firm to generate income. This ratio is given by the following formula. Net operating ratio is equal to operating profit is equal to net sales minus operating cost or alternatively net sales minus within bracket cost of goods sold plus administrative and office expenses plus selling and distribution expenses. A slight variation of this is operating ratio which is given by the formula the total of operating expenses and operating profit ratio is always 100%. Return on investment. This ratio also acts as a performance measure and helps in comparative analysis. It is calculated by dividing the earnings before interest and taxes with the total investment in the firm or may also be termed as return on capital employed. It is given by the following formula. Return on capital employed is equal to earnings before interest and taxes divided by average total long-term funds multiplied by 100. Return on investment is equal to earnings before interest and taxes divided by net assets employed multiplied by 100. Return on equity. This ratio is a calculation of profitability from the shareholder's point of view. Return on equity is equal to net profits after taxes and preference dividends divided by average shareholder's equity multiplied by 100. Earnings per share or EPS. This ratio is a return generated for a 
an investor in the company and is relevant for thousands of investors of the company spread all over the nation and internationally. This ratio divides the earnings available to the equity shareholders with the total number of shares. Earning per share is equal to net profit after tax minus preference dividends divided by average number of equity shares. Liquidity ratios also called short term solvency ratios. The word liquidity means the ability of the firm to pay its liabilities arising in the day to day operations of the business timely. The major liquidity ratios are current ratio and liquid ratio. Current ratio. This is the most important liquidity ratio. It measures the ability of the firm to meet its short term liabilities. When we speak about liabilities, it means the current liabilities that are due for payment within a year and that too out of the current assets of the firm. This ratio is given as under. Current ratio is equal to current assets divided by current liabilities. Liquid ratio. This ratio is an extension of current ratio. Instead of taking all the current assets, it takes into consideration only the liquid assets. That is, it does not count stock and prepaid expenses as there is always a high risk in their convertibility into cash to pay current liabilities. It is given by the following formula. Liquid ratio is equal to liquid assets divided by current liabilities. Illustration The net sales of Apex company are rupees 15 crore. EBI of the company as a percentage of net sales is 12%. The capital employed comprises rupees 5 crore of equity, rupees 1 crore of cumulative redeemable preference shares bearing 13% rate of dividend and debt capital of rupees 3 crores at an annual interest rate of 15%. Corporate income tax rate is 14% required. Calculate the return on equity within bracket ROE for the company. Solution 1. Net sales is equal to 15 crores. EBIT is equal to 12% of net sales is equal to 1.8 crores. ROI is equal to EBIT divided by capital employed into 100. This means 1.8 crores divided by 9 crores into 100 which is 20%. If you look at the table, equity capital is 5, preference capital 1, debt capital 3 crores, total is 9 crores, tax rate is 40%, preference dividend 13%, Interest is 15%. Look at the second table. EBIT we have calculated above as 1.8 crores. Less interest on debt which is 45 lakhs or 0.45 crores. Earnings before tax EBT is 1.35 crores. Less tax at 40% 0.54. EAT or earning after tax is equal to 0.81 crore less preference dividend 1 into 13 percent is 13 lakhs earnings available to equity shareholders is 0.68 return on equity earnings available to shareholders is equal to profit available to equity shareholders divided by equity share capital multiplied by 100. This is equal to 0 0.68 divided by 5 into 100 is equal to 13.6% 
Illustration 2. The credit sales of Messrs. XYZ Limited is 16 lakhs per annum. The average debtors of the company are 10 lakhs. Find the debtors turnover ratio. Assume 360 days in a year. Solution 2. Debtors turnover ratio is equal to net credit annual sales divided by average trade debtors which is equal to 60 lakhs divided by 10 lakhs is equal to 6. To summarize, ratios are the relationship between two accounting figures and ratio analysis is a process of comparing two accounting ratios. Ratio analysis is one of the best tools to measure liquidity, solvency, profitability and management efficiency of the firm. If the ratios are derived after analyzing the past results, they help management in preparation of budgets, in formulation of policies and in preparing future plan of action. Ratios are classified on various bases. One such classification is based on the type of financial statement used for the purpose of calculation of ratio. The second is based on the function performed by the ratio and another one is based on how the ratios are expressed. The ratios are classified mainly on the basis of functionality and the various ratios based on this classifications are activity ratios, solvency ratios, profitability ratios and liquidity ratios. These are also called short term solvency ratios. Each ratio has its own utility and reveals a lot of information about the firm.